Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now I've got to come to terms with not having a motorcycle in the helmet head garage. And I don't know if I can do it. Cue the intro. Well, I've gone from two motorcycles in my garage to none because I've got a Honda monkey bike that I'm currently doing a weld adventure on and I completed leg one crossing the entire length of France and I am about to fly out shortly to do leg two covering the north side of Spain but the thing of it is is to fund all of this amazing adventure that I'm doing I've had to put my Harley Davidson Sportster up for sale and literally in a couple of days it's going to be collected that leaves me with no motorcycles in the garage I know I've got to do it because I know I've got to find extra money to fund the adventure the way I want the adventure to go and not just panic every single time I'm about to get on a plane to do the next leg of the world adventure. But I've got to come to terms with not having a bike in the garage and that for me is really difficult. Now this spot is where the Harley Davidson lives. Now I suppose trying to look at some of the positives I can clean up the garage and get the garage the way I want it to be. Well it's empty but that just makes me more upset because I have to do manual labour and actually tidy the garage up. And then this side is where Ashworth lives, the Honda monkey bike that's currently in the Pyrenees. So here's the thing, I now have all of this space with no motorcycle. And if you're like me and your motorcycle is something that after you've worked so hard and at the end of the day to release all that pressure of life is to go for that ride. To have just a few months without one is going to be actually quite difficult because yes i've got the world adventure and it is absolutely amazing i can't wait for the next leg because it's going to get better and better and better but i've also got commitments here in the uk in regards to the channel what means i will be getting another bike but in the meantime the gap the void i know i've got to come to terms with this <laughs> Hang on a minute. Oh, hang on. What about? Well, there is this, the Honda Vision NC50 that has been sat here for a few years and was one of the first adventures I did raising money for charity. And it's got its own story, but it's been sat here for years. And as you can see, it's <laughs> surrounded by junk. So I don't even know if it's gonna run or what the condition is behind this, but there's potential. So shall we? get this piece of helmet head history that i was saving for the day that the helmet head museum cafe stroke studio opens but shall we get it out shall we just see shall we just see if it even runs and what condition it's in shall we unbury it and give it some kind of life this could be interesting let's uncover it let's see what condition she's in Okay, I think 
I've created enough space by moving junk to another pile to get it out. I think. Shall we? So here's the thing, this bike brings back an unbelievable amount of memories because I was helped by people to fund it, I was helped by people to go and do the adventure, I was followed by massive big CC bikes fending people off. So many people got involved in that trip and the bonkersness of the entire thing is, is I put this bike through a lot during that little adventure. Let me explain. So what I did was... I bought this off of eBay from an old lady that had given up riding and she didn't do a lot and she kept it MOT'd and did the bare minimum to it and all that sort of stuff at her obviously local garage but she retired from riding this little bike which she put a shop in the front um, and in the back box and go back and forth back and forth but basically I bought this I can't remember how many years ago over two or three years ago now and I did a trip and I basically set off again from Desbury Northamptonshire and we set off in true helmet head style and we rode 85 miles on a bike that would probably average 25 miles an hour we had a graphics company get involved that put on all of the cool graphics on the bike I even had a piece a, a, a bread strapped to it a French stick and fairy lights and all sorts of stuff now these are all the people that got involved at the time now fentor i still see fentor on a regular basis and we still do stuff together a guy called hoppo Cresshead, that's a music channel paul scammel where i spelt his name wrong so I had to add an extra l <laughs> abigail bovenzi andy todd steve bolter it's an absolute legend andy moore was the first ever person i jumped over human being i jumped over on the monkey cycle and the graphics place did all this cool stuff to it it's really cool. Now, on this back box, <laughs> on this original back box, quite funny that they're still the ties. I put a massive bag with a tent and all sorts strapped to it. And this was bouncing down the road. And before we even set off, me and the sidekick somehow managed to wheelie the bike, what wasn't on camera, and crack the number plate that's got held together by duct tape. Wow. And then here, right here, right? These are knobbly tyres, because what I wanted to do is when I reach Skeg Vegas, I wanted to make it all the way to the sea. So I rode this little scooter across the beach. <laughs> it's insane. Absolutely insane. Um, wow, the memories this little bike has. But 25 miles an hour and 85 miles literally took us from, I think it was from 8 in the morning to about 4 p.m. to be able to do incredible i still have the visions of literally the vision and the visions of going down the road with like a gs and other adventure bikes and people following us all the way and they were fending off the traffic because when you do 25 miles an hour on the national speed limit road where most people go quicker anyway we were holding up a lot of traffic and the bikes were all in their fend off positions and there was me and the sidekick zooming along at 25 mile an hour bouncing all over the place and we had the biggest blast ever and we did well we raised some decent money for ptsd uk but it's been sat here pretty much ever since so shall we shall we see if she'll fire up shall we see i don't know if she will she's got a kickstart i'm not charged with battery there's nothing i've done to it we'll fire it up and then we'll look at the potential if it fires up if it's going to be worth putting back on the road okay just for a laugh let's see how has that still got battery that's impressive but instead of just turning it over on the battery i'm gonna try kickstarting it and see how many kicks it takes if it fires up at all <laughs> this will be interesting i'm impressed there's battery still in it i think i replaced the battery i might not have 
when I got it off the old lady. I don't know. Let's try and kickstart it. See how many kicks it actually takes. I don't know how many kicks that was. I have no idea. Oh, I need a peasant to do this. But listen to that. Listen to that. Listen to it per the smell of two stroke. That makes me literally feel like I am 16 again. Or even less than that. I think it was 13 when I bought my vision when I was a kid but everyone knows the backstory but when I got it was a white vision not this vision obviously but it just takes me back every time listen to it now I didn't think it was going to go Whew. yes yes I mean I'm just so excited it fired I generally I don't know what kick was it kick 30 kick 50 I was generally sitting there going like, do you know what? It's not going to fire up and I'm going to have to whip the spark plug out and all that. But she fired up and then she just ran. Well, I'm pretty sure she'd just normally conk out. And that fuel is old now. I mean, it's smoky. Of course it is. But it fired up. And the smell, I said the two-stroke, just makes you feel alive. So, should we have a look at it in realistic terms? Now, this is very visual, to be fair. But we've got to think of it like this. If she goes back on the road... If she goes on another adventure, what does she need? Just visually, I already know, let alone this tyre still looks really good. It's been on there for years. And even when I took it for its last MOT, he said you probably want to replace the tyres because they're getting old. So, front tyre. Now, of course, I think that's flat. Whoa. Yeah, that's proper flat. So, I think these are inner tubes as well. So, it'll be two inner tubes two new tires obviously that really shouldn't be on the road anyway but that knobbly needs to go back to a standard scooter tire so two front and rear tire two inner tubes number plate because it's being held together with duct tape so this is my thinking the whole point of stripping back and selling a harley is of course to get some more money in the bank and be able to put some money together so whatever i do has to be ridiculously cheap so I need to get two tyres, two inner tubes and an exhaust and pay for an MOT, then insurance and then tax and it's good to go. But do I? Or should it stay as a museum piece? Or do I put the vision back on the road and then try to do in between a world adventure the most cheapest budgeted Honda Vision adventure in the world? I don't know. What do you think? Do we? Do we do the most craziest, cheapest, budgetest ever adventure in the meantime? I don't know. I don't know.